various channels so that people can see that. So we are live now uh, yeah. on YouTube. So maybe we'll okay. leave it just a couple of minutes before we start. Oh, that's good. So, Arafat, did it work? Yeah, going on. I'm still at sight. Oh, good, good. So, when are we doing AGM? Maybe end of the year, no? December, second week. Okay. Five more months. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll start, uh, Rafat. I think. Uh, good evening, uh, my dear friends, and uh, welcome to our CPD talk of uh, July month. Uh, the our topic today is uh, high rise building construction. As you know, as engineers, we always do uh, construction, but now we are taking a topic of uh, demolition. Uh, in general, our DNA is about the construction, but uh, because of uh, various construction facilities are already constructed in this part of the world. We want to see how the demolition is going on. So we thought that this topic would be interesting between the professional engineers, hence we've chosen the topic with our good speaker, Mr. Arafat. So uh, coming to our sponsor, uh, thank you for uh, our sponsor, Golden Sponsor Tech Assistant Idea Statica uh, for this uh, event to organize and sponsoring the event. Um, just brief about uh, our speaker, uh, Mr. Arafat is a charter structural engineer from our institution, uh, Institute of Structural Engineers, and he's also a member of uh, Institute of Engineers India, and he's a Dubai uh, Unlimited uh, License holder, and he's also a member of Institute of Professional Engineers International UK. He's got about 20 plus years of experience in uh, UAE and uh, other countries, and Middle East and Europe. He worked for hotels, towers, retail, small, and signature high-res buildings, so hotel towers. And currently, is in charge for West to energy power plants uh, design and execution. And he also involved in refurbishment and modification of projects. And uh, welcome, Mr. Arafat. Uh, thank you for your time uh, for us uh, to provide uh, such a good topic. Uh, for the people, uh, but uh, I only request is uh, for our team and etc. See, demolition is not a, a first option to consider. As a, as I said, you know, we are engineers. We always construct buildings. We review all the options uh, and see that uh, to be utilized or reutilize the building and facility. We can only take the option of demolition uh, when it is not uh, fully obsolete or not utilized or some reason. So our aim is to keep the facility as much as possible to usable. If client and uh, all aspects are obsolete, then we can go for demolition. This is uh, basically a, something like a condition, uh, a star uh, demolition is not an option for us, but a good sustainability. 
Thank you. Thank you for your time. Mr. Sharafat, this platform is yours. Please uh, take over. Thank you, Samma, for the nice introduction. Thanks to ISTECTI UAE chapter and our sponsor, Tech Assist, providing the opportunity to present it. Good evening, everyone, or maybe people joining from different parts of the world. Good afternoon. High risk building demolition and its engineering design. Do we need structural engineering design for high risk building demolition? It's a question. Do we need structural engineering design for the high risk building demolition? We have been into design and construction of high risk building for many years. Now it's time to see another side of high risk business, which is demolition of high risk building. This presentation will take you through the process of high risk building demolition with experience from the Guinness World Record building demolition done in Abu Dhabi in November 2020. As we are structural engineers, this presentation will focus on structural engineering design side of the demolition, where you can relate demolition engineering design with the building design. Rambol acted as a lead consultant and supervision engineer on this project. Rambol is a global engineering architecture and consultancy company founded in Denmark in the year 1945. Our 16,000 experts create sustainable solutions across the buildings, transport, water, environment and health, architecture, landscape and urbanism, energy management consulting. Across the world, Rambol combines local experience with a global knowledge base to create sustainable cities and societies. We combine insight with the power to drive positive change to our clients in the form of ideas that can be realized and implemented. We call it as bright ideas, sustainable change. We provide technical consultancy service and experience as basis of, for enabling execution and planning projects. We perform holistic analysis of the challenges at hand and provide multidisciplinary solution needed to solve this most beneficial way. We provide consultancy on almost every aspect of the large range of projects from the highly technical details to the process of successful results. We have a powerful tool of combining our technical consultancy with the socio-economic analysis and process knowledge. We are the leading experts within number of technical areas. Here, we are the engineers that other engineers consult. World map. We have global presence with especially strong representation in Nordics, the UK, North America, continental Europe, Middle East, Asia Pacific. Rambol has 300 offices across 35 countries worldwide. We combine global knowledge with the local experience, necessary to have physical presence in the local markets to understand specific needs of our clients. Draw on our combined knowledge and expertise across disciplines and national borders. Rambol has been operating in the Middle East, Asia, Pacific region since 1995 with approximately 1,950 multidisciplinary employees. We have delivered some of the region's most iconic planning and design projects in our buildings, energy, transport, environment and health, water and architecture, landscape and urbanism markets. 17 number of offices across 10 countries, including UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, India, Singapore, China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Australia and New Zealand. Market presence in the region, buildings, environment and health, energy, transport, water, architecture, landscape and urbanism. We work on projects, we combine our capabilities, whichever way benefits the project results. Clients, private and public sector, clients through the Middle East and Asia, with the key clients from among the industrial, utility, oil and gas, property developers, architects, financial and legal consultants, as well as municipality, government agencies, regulatory academic communities.
In 1995, Rambol expanded its operation to the Middle East for more than 25 years. Rambol has been providing multidisciplinary solutions to serve business, governments, and communities across the Middle East region, from the engineering design of buildings and infrastructure to the management of resources such as energy, oil and gas. Our work spans disciplines and sectors. Our solutions include design, design and strategy that have broad applications in the built environment and beyond. Our four offices based in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, UAE, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Doha. Our 200 strong team specialize structural engineering, building services, sustainability, environmental services, transport and energy. Our engineering consultants, scientists and professionals believe that excellent skills are norms. We always believe our combination of human ingenuity and exciting solutions to create together with ability to solve the most complex challenges is what is our part. Over the course of decades, we have delivered some of the region's most iconic planning, designing and projects in the buildings, oil and gas, transport, infrastructure, environmental energy sectors. The images on the screens are our latest few projects. The top left corner is Makers District, the Pixel. The Makers District sets, becomes one of Abu Dhabi's most iconic community. On the top right, Green Planet, Rambol was the design and build contract, contractor's lead consultant in Green Planet where our role was to provide full engineering and design site supervision. Bottom left, Jumeirah Gate, Rambol was appointed as a MEP design, sustainability service, supervision services. Bottom right corner is DWMC, that is Dubai Waste Management Center, is the world's largest waste to energy power plant under construction in Dubai. Rambol is the honors engineer in this project. Now comes the topic. In this presentation, we will cover what, why, and how are the high-rise building demolitions, including various methods of demolition. This demolition received the Guinness World Records Award for the highest multi-tower demolished using explosives. In the past, the highest tower demolished using implosion was single 30-story building, but in this case, it's a four towers of floor varies from 27 to 47 stories. Let me play the video. The video took on 27th November 2020, 8 a.m., which is the basis of this presentation. Brief background on this project. What is the project at all? As the image shows, it was a beautiful design located at one end of the Abu Dhabi Cornish. It has two basement, basement floor below ground, seven podium levels, and four towers of maximum floor of 47 stories. The development were planned as a mixed use complex, including residential, commercial, and office spaces with concession cost of 0.4 billion US dollar. Well designed building projects started construction in the year 2008. The structure were completed and the services were installed. The finishing works were started. In the year 2014, the project got stopped due to quality issues, mainly structural issues. In the year 2016, it was decided to get rid of the tower by demolishing it. Finally, it got demolished in 2020. The plot size is 180 meter wide by 150 meter long. Public roads on three sides of the plot boundary. The tallest tower is 170 meter above the ground level. How to do the demolition? Like any building projects, the demolition projects also has various phases. The high level stages are planning, execution and close out. Planning stage consists of many activities. Listed are the main activities. 
As mentioned before, our focus today is on the demolition engineering design activity as we are structural engineers. Hence, we'll spend majority of our time on planning stage. We will cover execution and close out stage in high level only due to time constraints. I'm happy to extend the discussion on the other topics if required later. To plan the demolition, we need to understand the demolition methodologies. There are three popular methods in practice. This includes top-down traditional method. You can see on the screen where the machines are on top on the floor slab and demolish the elements by element. The second method is using explosive called implosion. The third method is demolition using long reach excavators. Each of these methods has pros and cons. The selection criteria is based on the safety, program and cost. Next slides will we'll see the comparison of three popular methods. These are the pros and cons of three suitable options for the high risk building demolition. The blue texts are the cons where we need additional attentions. For example, Top-down demolition would need strengthening of the floor slab to support the demolition equipment. It's a high-risk activity as we are working on a deteriorated structure with a slow process requires a long program. The second option is to use long-reach excavator. The main limitation is maximum reach is 100 meter only, not suitable for 170 meter tall tower. The third option is implosion method, which is the cost effective method as compared to other two methods due to the shortest program. Generally, the cost reduction is 50 to 60 percentage, but this would need much of an engineering design, weakening the structure and require a highly skilled contractor to execute the work. Now comes the interesting subject, demolition structural design. What is it and how to do it? Demolition structural design is very similar to the high-rise building design where we play between the strength and stiffness and load path. In demolition, the governing load case is gravity load case as compared to lateral loads in high-rise building, high-rise design. The boundary conditions are a bit different in demolition design as compared to the building design where we use almost standard boundary conditions in building design. We will discuss the boundary condition in the current project in following stage slides. Then comes to design philosophy. The demolition design using implosion is exploiting the benefit of progressive collapse. Or we can say designed to achieve the progressive collapse against in the building design, we design to avoid the progressive collapse. Once everything is set, then the actual modeling to be done similar to ETAPS or any other FEM model in building design. In demolition design, the analysis method is nonlinear dynamic construction time history analysis. Following slide will show main comparison between the building design and the demolition design. These are the few similarities between construction design and demolition design. You can see the various stages in the design, including concept stage schematic in demolition design as well. The bold texts are the main difference between the construction design and demolition design. In demolition design, we need to weaken the structure against in construction designs, strengthening in the construction design. In building design, we design to prevent progressive collapse. Against the demolition design, we design to achieve the progressive collapse. In building design, we use FEM, finite element method, to analyze the structure, whereas in demolition design, we use AEM, applied element method, to analyze the structure. We will discuss more on the AEM bit later. Types of analysis. In building design, we use nonlinear dynamic analysis, where in demolition design uses nonlinear dynamic time history analysis. In building design, we limit the structural vibration to the occupancy comfort or to reduce the structural damages due to fatigue. Whereas in demolition design, limit the ground vibration to avoid damages to the public utilities and other structural damage to adjacent structures. 
another very interesting part of progressive collapse. What is progressive collapse? As the image shows, the spread of a local failure leads to collapse of entire system or the large extent of the structure. This is also called disproportionate collapse. While doing the in-situ concrete design, we don't generally give much attention on this as this is achieved by default in most of the time. But it is critical in non-rigid joint structures like precast concretes or steel structures. The aim of the building design is to avoid progressive collapse, but in demolition design, the progressive collapse is beneficial and the design to achieve the progressive collapse. How to achieve the progressive collapse, we'll discuss in later slides. The next interesting topic in demolition engineering design is AEM, Applied Element Method, which is an advanced version of finite element method. Applied element method is an innovative modeling method adopting concept of discrete cracking. Structures are modeled as an assembly of relatively small elements made by dividing the structures virtually. The screen shows the sum of the representation how the model is discretized. You can see on the screen this large structure and then one element is discretized and from that uh, uh, how to discretize more. In FEM, the elements are connected through the nodes with the six degrees of freedom, but in AEM works with a surface connection and set of normal and shear springs. Once the connected springs ruptured, then elements got separated. The crack cracked concrete means the principal tensile stretch stress reaches to the crack cracking strength of the concrete or FCR. We will discuss how this methodology utilized for the demolition engineering a bit later. I just want to give you some fire on your thoughts on how long, how this methodology can be utilized for our, our requirements like check against disproportionate collapse, which is a mandatory requirement. And we don't have the right tool to evaluate such complex problems. AEM and FEM comparison. The distinction between the FEM and AEM is summarized an eye level on this chart. You can see, the what extent is the AEM comparing to the FEM. Few years back, we were excited to see ETAPS introducing ult, in ultimate incorporated with material nonlinearity in the construction, <coughs> in the construction sequence analysis, which was previously available only in SAP or SAP 2000 or MIDAS gen before. I wouldn't be surprised if the AEM would be part of CSI software in coming versions. But now I see that we can do much more accurate analysis with other advanced methods and software. You can see the AEM gives a reliable results somewhere mid range of displacement problem and capability of elements separation like cracks and fracture. AEM can offer a reliable results in entire spectrum of large displacement and collision. Let us take a short break from the theoretical part now. Let us discuss what are the baseline for the current design, which is demolition design. Like any building design, we need to set the boundary conditions in demolition design as well. The constraints on the boundary conditions are, constraints or the boundary conditions are the physical requirements based on the many parameters. For this particular demolition project, our boundary conditions are, First one, demolition debris should not fall outside the footprint of the building. You can see the towers are very close to the public road and utility service corridor, which is marked in blue in the image. The main aim of the design is to building should fall inwards towards plot. The second boundary condition is limited or limited effect or the, on the second basement shoring wall. Any collapse of the shoring wall will lead to progressive collapse of the adjacent utility service corridors and the roads around the building. Third boundary condition is no or limited damages to the adjacent building due to the building demolition. Fourth constraint is minimize the noise, vibration and dust. All these constraints are set as a baseline for the demolition design.
Now we'll see how the modeling using AEM. It is very similar to any FEM models like STAP or STAND or ANSYS using solid elements, but more details at micro level. The geometry and material properties are to be incorporated as accurate level. Higher concrete strength of 130% of the strength was used to evaluate the uncertainty. 3D model is based on as-built drawings, as-built information, crack survey information, overall vulnerability of assessment of the structure. The soil is modeled, the foundation soil is modeled as a plant dimension of half kilometer length and width and 284 meter deep. The elastic modulus of the soil is taken as an average value for every 40 meters. Sensitivity of the results was checked by changing the elastic modulus from 3000 to 10,000 kg per square centimeter. The entire structure is modeled as a replication of as-built environment. The image on the left shows the tower separated by the movement joint. Two basement, seven level podium and the towers are modeled in AEM using extreme loading software, including the second pile shoring wall, basement retaining wall and entire structure as it is. You can see on the expansion joint are modeled in the software. We had expansion joint with double columns and expansion joint with beam corbels. Beam corbel is a, a complex scenario for the modeling due to the spring to replace the frictional resistance. The spring stiffness to consider the estimated stiffness and additional stiffness due to site existing conditions. On bottom right image, you can see how the column corbels are modeled to replicate the asphalt conditions. Just imagine how we will be dealing this scenario in our ETABS model. Similar for the slab resting on the basement wall with rubber joints on top right corner. As mentioned before, AEM is a nonlinear model. The nonlinearity applicable in geometry and materials. Hence, it is important to model the materials, including the reinforcement. The image shows how the slabs and column reinforcements are incorporated in the model. The floors are pre-stressed slabs. The post-tension tendons are modeled to the best accuracy level. You can see the image of the floor slab with the tendons. The accuracy of the pre-tension force is also a critical item. Hence, model to replicate the as-built drawings and current state of the tendon, including the corrosion levels. Now comes another challenge. How to establish the corrosion levels? Here comes the material testing, engineering inspections, and engineering judgment in the picture. One of the major constraint or boundary condition was no damage to the utility services. Hence, the shoring wall model is critical. You can see on the image how the basement shoring wall, second pile wall is modeled. The red blocks on the image is a second pile shoring wall and the adjacent orange color block is the replication of the permanent basement wall. Just this, this is a shoring wall and permanent basement wall. More detailed view of the shoring wall, the reinforcements are accurately modeled. You can see on the screen how the reinforcements are modeled. Details of the basement. You can see on the connection between the second pile wall, second pile shoring wall and the permanent basement retaining wall is modeled. Note that the connection between basement two slabs and the retaining wall is a moment connection, whereas the connection between the basement one floor and slab the retaining wall is a shear connection. Hence the replication of this is critical in the AEM modeling as well. Loading on the substructure, this includes sulfate of the substructure, active and passive earth pressure, water pressure, lateral, water uplift pressure, surcharge load, reaction from the buildings, automatic from 3D model. Floor slab additional reinforcement in the model. The precess slab has additional reinforcement, which generally comes as a note in the standard detail drawings. 
but in the AEM model needs to replicate the reinforcement in the model itself. The image shows how the additional reinforcement in the slabs are modeled in AEM. Banded PTB model. Image shows the additional reinforcement model in the banded PTB, PTB post-tension beam. Another interesting topic, modeling the cracks. The accurate information of the crack is required to simulate the effect. A structural detailed condition assessment is required to map the cracks. This include the location, extent, depth of the cracks. Then this will model in the AEM model. The image on the left shows how the cracks at site, but it don't have any width or depth of the cracks. The image on the right shows the cracks model in the AEM. The depth and width of the cracks will get from the structural condition assessment report. Now let us compare the safe long-term analysis crack simulation and ELS model simulations. Maybe it is not relevant to model the cracks in the design stage, as we always hybrid the design between coral requirements and FEM model. Now let us come to the global level. We have seen what are the requirements, what are the boundary conditions or the baselines, the available design demolition methodology, how to model the structure, the level of accuracy required in the model. Once we model the structure, then we need to simulate the progressive collapse of the structure by removing the verticals in a time lapse called time history. The colored flows are the flows where we need to remove the vertical structures to make sure that collapse fall, collapse or the fall of the structure meets the requirements. How to remove the columns and core wall? Using explosives. Similar to the high rise design where we need to do a number of iterations with the stiffness and strength before we confirming the final model. In the motion design also, the design needs to do many permutations and combinations before arriving the final design, which satisfies the project requirement. What are the outputs for we are expecting from the design? The demolition design will give what are the sequence of the column and core wall removal to achieve the progressive collapse, which floor and what timings to be removed, which direction the building will fall, prediction of the basement movement, how much vibration will it produce due to the impact of the building fall? What extent the vibrations and how this will be impacting the buildings around half kilometer from the radius of the implosion? Will give how the utilities will be affected and then we can decide the protection shall be implemented to avoid any damages to utilities. Design output. 12 flows need to be blasted not the same time, but in a margin of time lag. Time history input to the final model will be converted into a drawings with the time lapse. You can see on the drawing shows what time interval the columns in a flow to be removed. The entire collapse is in 10 seconds. The numbers in the sketch indicates the time of interval for the individual columns in milliseconds. Flow plan with time history of the column removal will be generated floor by floor. These are the demolition design output. You can see on the collapse time history in 3D model. The image one shows the model in zero second. The image two shows the model in one second. Then goes three second and five second. Seven and nine seconds. The whole collapse and the predicted debris, the whole collapse, the, see the predicted debris height is 20 meter plus meter above the ground level. The final model met all the requirements and boundary conditions. Based on the analysis, the vibration measures at WAF location was found to be 18 millimeter per second, while at different utilities locations varies from 60 to, you know, 6 to 28, 20 millimeter per second, which are acceptable value for the ground vibration. blast floor in multiple levels. The yellow highlighted are the blast floors. Collapse simulation. You can see that towers falls towards the 
other buildings which is internally and basement intact. So the whole building comes towards planning stage deliverables. At this stage, we will have a report with the details of element removal, time history, noise, dust, and vibration level, impact on the structure and as other assets, analysis model, technical specification for the execution and recommendation specialist contractors. Planning is done, what is next? I think I had to run, run it quickly as this wouldn't be much interest of the design engineers. How to execute the design? The main contractor to understand what are the parameters of the design. In other words, the design requirements. If he cannot meet the any requirements, then need to do redo the design. The requirements are soft stripping, service decommissioning, removal of facade and props, CMU, reduce the structural stiffness, weakening the structure for the benefit of the easy fall. Drilling the verticals of the explosive filling, wrapping the verticals and the implosions, test blast, explosive filling, detonator fixing, charging. How to verify the demolition design works or design verification by testing. For the test, for the test blast needs to be done. We have done three test blasts as shown in the table, multiple locations, two in the columns, one in the shear walls not on original building columns, but new columns constructed to simulate the affecting condition, existing conditions. You can see the details of the members and quantities of the explosives used. Test blast setup. The image on the left side shows two new columns constructed and explosive field and protected to work done by the wrapping the column. The image on the right shows the post blast condition. Weakening the structure, you can see how this will be done in, this, in the towers. Most of the structural cuttings were done to facilitate the core drilling for explosive and wrapping work. Nearly 900 numbers of structural weakening done on this project. Coring for the explosive filling. Nearly 22 kilometer length of coring done to fill the explosive in this project. Four kilometers in each towers and 2.7 kilometers in podium levels. Protection of the blasting columns. Some of the details of the column protection as shown in the slide. You can see that protection requires only the areas where explosives are fixed. The protection system designs is a part of the contractor's scope of work as a temporary work design in the building construction. Protection of blast floor. We need to wrap the blast floor as well as the secondary line of defense in addition to the column protection. You can see on the black band on the right side of the image where the floors are in tower one. Blast floor wrapping done in the tower. Left side is the image on the tower three. Explosive filling and the connections. Implosion day on 27th November 2020. It was a huge success and Guinness World Record demolition. The image shows the post implosion site condition. Now comes the last part of the project, which is close out. We are still working on this to clear the site. The program for the clearance is six months, not easy task. It has its own challenges. Now comes the end of the presentation. It's nearly, yeah, one hour. Few takeaway from the presentation. 
cost of poor quality, importance of construction as designed, demolition and its structural design, AEM, what it is and how it is. It is useful for structural design, especially verification or code compliance check for the design to prevent the progressive collapse or for the real time performance based on the design of post natural disaster like earthquake or tsunami affected structures or fire damage structures or the blast analysis. The structural behavior of the constructed facility when subjected to a loads beyond the conventional design can be addressed using AEM. Thank you, your time. Thank you for your time. Over to you, Sama. Thank you, Arafat. It looks, uh, we realized a more complex design demolition than the construction looks like, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. Good. Uh, I think we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, any question and answers, uh, questions, you can post it in the Q&A uh, bottom line, bottom, uh, bottom of your uh, system. Any questions? Okay. A compliment, actually. Okay, I'll put a question one. So, uh, actually, why it is demolished? Uh, is it okay to ask you that question? Uh, yeah, because it's an engineering forum. I would say that's uh, in a short answer. It's a cost of quality. So of we need, quality. yeah, we need to realize that if any other disciplines, imagine a okay, facade is failed, or maybe a MEP is failed, we can replace it one equipment, or maybe entire system. Mm -hmm. But if anything goes wrong with the structure, it's very difficult to repair it and, and nobody is going to give any insurance for it. Oh, and uh, there is a secondary uh, effect on it that, uh, you know, the, uh, the owner has a different plan and oh. he won't have a, a different idea to implement it. So it's a mixture of two, oh. two decisions, yeah. Good, I think we are receiving questions, I think now software. What is the software uh, doing in AEM analysis? Software for doing AEM analysis. What is the software you're using for AEM analysis? So it's called ELS, Extreme Loading Software. The software name is ELS. There are many softwares, but on this particular projects, we used e, uh, ELS, Extreme Loading Software. But uh, there are um, many software like ANSI or uh, the advanced software, FEM software, which they can do it with a little bit of that. Uh, okay. A question from Mr. Pravin Kumar. Uh, what was the duration of the demolition design program? Uh, yeah, it's a strategic conclusion in weeks. So he was yeah, he wanted to answer in weeks. You know. <laughs> that's correct. I would say that it's more than fifty-four weeks. Wow, fifty-four weeks. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, the problem was that uh, every permutations and combinations need to be discussed. And this was supposed to be a proof, proof, you know, peer reviewed, and this has to be convinced to the authorities. So it's a, a, a just like in a super tall building design. So it's a, it's a long process. Okay, again, same question asked. What software you use? That's okay. Uh, question from Mr. Babu Raghavan. Could you please discuss about structural system of each structure? Oh, that's a frame. Okay, <laughs> can you discuss? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, this traditionally, uh, the practice is here. It's a building frame system where we have a, a central core wall and uh, then the columns and flat, the floor slab is post-tension slab supported on a, a, a columns are supported on a raft and the pile. So the one of the challenge was here, uh, this 47 meter tall, 47 story tower, it has got a nearly one meter thick core wall. And to demolish one meter thick core wall, it needs a, a huge amount of work. Imagine we need to drill all the, all the way up to, if, imagine the core wall length is 20 meter. So we need to drill all the way up to a 75 millimeter for cover. And we need to make a drill of 150 dia and fill the explosive. So the structural system is a, a building frame system, central spine uh, uh, core wall, then flat slab supported on columns. Okay, good. A question from Anonymous. Do you have any code uh, for this demolition? And I know the, uh, you consider load factor 130% uh, in your uh, presentation. Maybe uh, the, that's maybe a, uh, the 
collapsible strength or i don't know what is the uh, ultimate strength mm. they assume they have any particular standard for this yes there are iso standards there are uh, ansi standards and there are european standards as well but uh, we don't have a a single standard this is a a, a combination of multiple standards and uh, as we know that this is a, a specialist subject we don't have any local regulations other than that uh, uh, ad hoc requirement yes uh, this collab this demolition is based on the iso standards uh, after demolition again question from mr babu raghavan uh, what are the materials you recycled and reused which is very important for us <laughs> yeah uh, almost all the materials are recycled like uh, steel is oh. uh, yeah steel is taken directly uh, we established fine crusher to crush the concrete and take out the steel away and steel is completely taken for the recycling and the agri and the, uh, the concrete debris are crushed to a, a road base and we are backfilling it uh, in the basement to construct the new new development on top of it good uh a question from mr punal chandra hegde um on what basis you selected the floors for uh, blasting on what basis you selected the floor of a blasting ah, basically okay. you are you, yes. you are you are filling the material to blast correct you yes yes you yeah. wrap and etc yeah on what basis you selected those floors okay so uh, you know the the principle is not blasting the principle is that we need to remove the columns or oh, uh-huh. we need to remove the uh, uh, vertical so that you know the gravity 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 will assist us to fall the building down mm-hmm. okay now uh, selection so we have the boundary conditions that okay at any cost the building should not fall beyond the boundary uh, the plot boundary so we start with the permutations like okay what if that if first floor is blasted how it will it will be behaving it's falling to inwards or outwards so all these permutations and combinations which gives us the final results yes these are the columns these are the floor columns to be blasted and these are the sequence of the blasting so means you know it's not blasted at the same time each column is blasted in a microsecond interval uh-huh. so the answer is yes it's based on the analysis aem analysis good i have one general question from my side actually see for example in ashok jayad road you have a series of super tall towers with a distance of uh, 10 meters apart yeah maybe coming to after 50 years or maybe 100 years somebody wants to demolish one of the two super tall tower in between is it possible or with implosion or you have to do floor by floor so yeah that's what we are here right so we are engineers <laughs> <laughs> we need to yeah, find a solution that. to it. you need to find a solution to it yeah definitely why not yeah if imagine uh, if in a super tall tower to be demolished which is so, very nearby another super tall tower to be intact not to be demolished in that scenario so implosion is not possible i'm just out of your question i mean just to so, add a- uh, i i'm not sure that is there any other other method methodology of demolishing for the super tall towers because the you know the second option is long reach excavators the existing condition long reach excavators can up to go up to 100 meter mm-hmm. so even if you extend the technology maybe yeah but at the moment i don't i don't have any correct answer for that but uh, i would assume that yes why not why can't we do uh, with implosion without affecting the other buildings yeah i think the last question we take up uh, what is the purpose of wrapping a uh, question from anonymous uh, the columns which are being exploded is it for the control flying of debris or what is the reason you know ah uh, yes that's correct that is the uh, control of the debris flying and you know uh, there are two types of bl- wrapping here first one is that we are filling explosives in the columns and core walls so we will be wrapping the columns and core walls on a, on top of it we need to wrap the the fl- blasting floor as well and blasting fo- floor the wrapping uh, the, the line is almost like three line of three layer of wrapping mm-hmm. so the main purpose is to control the the debris good it's a standard uh, yeah oh. i think uh, that's all from questions i believe uh, uh, thank you very much uh, mr arafat for your uh, 
excellent presentation, which is a new area of uh, engineering, I should say. I don't know in future, uh, nobody should use this demolition, but uh, if it is unavoidable, yes, we should consider a safe demolition as you recommend it. Uh, thank you for that and uh, thank you for your time. And few uh, few requests and notices for our members. Uh, as you know, all the eligible, eligible members must have received uh, election notification or a voting uh, from HQ. As you know, there is a, a structure for success. There's a mail from uh, HQ. Uh, there are elections, uh, voting is under progress for vice president, uh, HQ, as well as board member, HQ again, and the ordinary board member, ordinary member, sorry. So uh, generally our voting percentage is less. Kindly vote, uh, there's a time, but uh, don't wait for time. Uh, I'm sure uh, from our region, uh, there are three are uh, participating, please uh, go through their statements. And uh, our from region, Mr. Muhammad is uh, representing for vice president and uh, Mr. John, our past president, both are uh, contesting for board member and myself for ordinary member. Please go through the statements, please vote and inform your friends and who are eligible members must have received a notification for the voting. It's very simple. It's a two minute exercise because we want to increase the voting percentage uh, so that everybody will be active in the election process. That's, an, that's a request. And uh, uh, another point is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, next, uh, you know, September, there will be a chartered member exam, maybe September, end of the September. Uh, if anybody wants any help, you can approach uh, members, uh, qualified members, or you can go through YouTube channels available. We are planning a session, but uh, still not decided. We'll come back to you with the program if anything, uh, finalized. Uh, that's it. Uh, and at last, not but the least, uh, thank you for our sponsors, uh, Take Assist and Idea Statica uh, for sponsoring the event. He's our gold sponsor. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all your time. Arafat, uh, thank you for your uh, good time and uh, sparing uh, uh, new idea or new knowledge for us. Thank you. You're welcome, Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending this.